uh, let's uh, demonstrate all these things with uh, one more example and that will conclude our today's lecture uh, the system that we have is given by g of s is we want to obtain its uh, root locus and we shall apply uh, we shall determine all those details of root locus as well so first step is to locate uh, open loop poles and zeros in the s plane so there is a pole at origin another pole at s equal to minus one and uh, two poles which are roots of this uh, are at uh, uh, minus 2 s equal to minus 2 plus minus j3 so let's uh, reduce uh, the scale slightly uh, minus 1 is over here and then minus 2 and 1 2 3 j3 it's complex conjugate so here is the location of open loop poles first apply the real axis rule so this is part of the root locus uh, what about this one this is not part of root locus how many finite poles four, four uh, finite poles no finite zero therefore four asymptotic lines center of these asymptotic number of asymptotic lines is four and center of these asymptotic lines uh, is equal to sigma a which is equal to sum of finite poles uh, here we have one pole at 0 another pole at minus 1 another pole at uh, minus 2 plus j3 and another pole at minus 2 minus j3 sum of finite poles minus sum of finite zeros there is no finite zero divided by number of finite poles minus number of finite zeros so that is equal to minus uh, uh, minus 5 by 4 minus 5 by 4 center of asymptotic lines angle of asymptotic lines is plus minus 180 degrees uh, 2l plus 1 where l is an integer divided by number of finite zeros minus number of finite poles so what do we get if we substitute as equal to 0 we have 180 uh, divided by 4 which we get uh, there are 4 asymptotic lines so there should be 4 angles plus minus 45 degrees and if we substitute L equal to 1 we get uh, plus minus 135 degrees so let's uh, draw the asymptotic lines center is somewhere here and 45 degrees here is 45 degrees and then 135 degrees and minus 135 degrees these are four asymptotic lines we know that root locus will emerge from the poles and be, will become parallel to these asymptotic lines if uh, we want to have very uh, rough sketch of root locus uh, it will look like this one emerge from the root locus become parallel to these asymptotic lines root locus starting from these poles and then root locus starting from uh, this pole will become parallel to this asymptotic line and root locus parallel will become parallel to this asymptotic line uh, we can refine this root locus by determining uh, more details for example we can determine this point breakaway point how to determine it we know we shall write this as a function of k and take its derivative so let's do that k is equal to minus 1 over g of s which is equal to uh, here this was k into g of s so k is minus 1 over gs which is uh, just uh, equal to and then differentiate this with respect to sigma 
we get uh, after uh, this k of sigma uh, we can write a few more steps uh, k uh, this uh, is equal to or you can perform all these multiplications uh, k of sigma is equal to sigma sigma plus 1 sigma squared plus 4 sigma plus 30 dk by d sigma you can uh, differentiate it in different ways you can even multiply then take the derivative or you can apply the product rule whichever is convenient for you and then after all those uh, things you know how to take the derivative i do not need to re repeat it we get 4 sigma cube plus 15 sigma square plus 34 sigma plus 13 and to determine the maximum point we need to substitute it equal to 0 and that gives you sigma equal to a third order polynomial here are three roots so minus 0 0.46 7 and minus 1.0. So for this third order polynomial, we have three roots, and among them, which one corresponds to this point? Uh, we can just determine it by observation. Otherwise, you can also take the second derivative to determine whether this point is maximum or not, corresponds to maximum or not. So, this point is the point which lies over here. So, to be more precise, root locus should emerge from somewhere over here, uh, slightly from the right of the midpoint. So, this is the midpoint, it must start from somewhere over here. So, let's uh, draw. Uh, slightly refined graph. So this graph is slightly refined. Now we can also determine these points to further refine it. For that purpose, we need to first write the closed loop transfer function and then uh, apply, for example, the roots criterion. So the closed loop transfer function, T of S is equal to K G of S 1 plus K G of S into H of S. In this particular example, H of S is equal to 1. Uh, so we get... Uh, uh, k over uh, s s plus 1 s squared plus 4 s plus 13 plus k by applying this relation uh, which can be rewritten as k over after multiplication of all these terms s power 4 and then construct the roots table s power 4 so the coefficients uh, in alternate way and then uh, this minus this divided by 5 so we get this thing right so 85 minus 13 is 72 divided by 5 to simplify the things we can even multiply this entire row by 5 to get 72 over here and then 5k over here. If you do not want to make such things, then you can even proceed without multiplying this row by 5. Then entry over here is this multiplied by this minus 25k. So we have uh, 72 multiplied by 13 minus 25k divided by uh, 72. And here we have uh, 0 and then here we have 5k for 
uh, critical stability this entire row should be equal to zero uh, that is 72 uh, multiplied by 13 minus 25k that should be equal to zero which gives you a value of k and that is equal to uh, that comes out to be equal to 37.4 this is the value of gain corresponding to these points what are these points we can if entire row is zero we can construct a polynomial from this row that is 72 s squared plus 5 k k we have already determined is equal to zero and from here uh, s comes out to be equal to plus minus uh, s equal to plus minus j 1.61 so this point is equal to j 1.61 now what we are left with is to determine this angle of departure and for that purpose we know the uh, relation angle of departure is equal to 180 degrees minus sum of angles uh, which uh, other ve vectors from other poles make to this point so there there is a vector this vector we need to determine this angle there is another vector we need to this determine this angle and then this angle so this angle angle of this vector is 90 degrees so let's uh, write it over here 90 degree is angle of this vector what is angle of this vector we uh, can compute it for example this angle uh, let's call it theta 1 so this angle of the vector is actually 180 degrees minus theta 1 so 180 degrees minus theta 1 is the angle of this vector and angle of this vector angle of this vector is 180 degrees minus theta 2 theta 1 where is theta 1 theta 1 uh, is equal to tangent inverse of this uh, length divided by this length so this length uh, is uh, that was uh, 4 uh, that was 3 right so 3 this length was 3 and this length is 1 so tangent inverse of and theta 2 is tangent inverse of this length this length is 3 and then this length which is 2 so these uh, angles can be computed uh, and uh, again let me compute it with my calculator tangent inverse of 3 so this angle comes out to be equal to 71 uh, uh, theta 1 comes out to be equal to 71 uh, this angle uh, this theta 1 and theta 2 is 56 therefore angle of departure is 180 degrees minus 90 degrees minus so this comes out to be equal to minus 143 degrees so this comes out to be equal to minus 143 degrees and uh, therefore uh, this angle should be this angle should be minus 143 degrees uh, minus 143 vector of 100 minus 143 degree where does it lie uh, if uh, this is minus 135 angle of this vector is minus 140 uh, 135 so slightly higher than this one so this is uh, actually we have sketched it correctly so this is the root logus for this system with all details
In the next lecture, we shall uh, learn how we can utilize root locus to design control controller for a given system.